So this is Kendra Karen. I'm here with Mom and Dad Packard at Packard Oaks in Telephone, Texas. It is February 19th, 2020. And we'll start with you, Dad. I want you to, if you would, just describe your mother. Yeah, my, my mother was born uh, in uh, uh, 1896 in uh, uh, Provo, Utah area, and then they moved to Canada, and she grew up in Canada. And that's where the, he, she met Dad, and uh, she was a, a feisty little girl, very, very uh, petite and very good-looking, loved to ride horses. In fact, she would race horses. She would win races because she was so good at it, uh, you know, with, with no saddle, just bareback. And she, uh, and she was very popular uh, in, in school and stuff. And she didn't, she didn't attend school uh, all the time because she lived out, when they moved to Canada, especially, they, they lived out on what they call a lease. Uh, in fact, she had two children, or one child, their oldest was out on the lease, and that was a lease from government uh, land that they lived at, the Carters did. And uh, she uh, she met Dad up there and uh, had two children, uh, both uh, Dee and uh, Beth, my sisters. In fact, right now, Beth is 101 years old. Hmm. I can't believe it, but Dee has yeah. passed away, but Beth is still living. She's child number two. And uh, I'm clear down at 13, so I uh, didn't get to know my oldest two or three brothers and sisters uh, very much because they were much older than I. Anyway, they uh, and they and then they moved from Canada uh, down to Napa, Idaho. They first lived in a home between Napa and Caldwell, uh, called Midway, right in between. And uh, they lived there in, in kind of a basement house. Uh, Dad uh, was a carpenter, and he uh, built the basement first, and that's where they lived. And it w wasn't for two or three years before they put the top of the house on and was able to move upstairs. But And, and Mom worked, uh, and she got babysitters to take care of uh, the those two children born there uh, in Midway. That would be Cleo and uh, Jay. And Where did she work? She, uh, uh, Napa D, I think they call it. It's just a department store. Okay. Oh, and didn't she, didn't, okay. she did not work very long. And, uh, and then she, the, the next, she moved into town when Dad came home from that first mission. He went to California. Uh, uh, on a uh, his first mission, and uh, while he was on that mission, uh, her number uh, fifth child got very very sick. His name was Forrest, and um, and it was just a, a couple of weeks after Dad came home. He came home early. I think he came home three, uh, two or three months early from his mission because they told him he needed to get home because you have a sick child. And, uh, and, he, and Forrest lived only, uh, I think it was two or three weeks after he arrived home. Uh, yeah. Let me interrupt here. Uh, in those days, back at that time, uh, they sent husbands off on missions, even though you know they had children at home, a wife at home, uh, or just newly married, they would send the fathers on missions for the 18 months or the two years. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, he he was, he was had been called by the church to serve this mission. So that's why well, the she prophet, was Well, the prophet at the time sent out a call for the men to go on missions. And, uh, and dad felt obligated that he should go. Uh, and he went on two? Uh, that's okay. his second mission. And... Uh, he, no, that's his first mission. He did not go on as a teenager. Okay. Uh, he, uh, that's his first mission. And then he later, when he came home from Japan, he went on another mission. Uh, anyway, um, mom uh, uh, had, uh, after Forrest was buried, uh, 
she had another child, Carter, is his, her name, and both of them died of, of pneumonia into the lungs. A very sad time, and it really did hurt my mother. Uh, and when she got pregnant with, uh, with Vaughn, uh, which is, um, uh, see, Forrest is number five, and Carter's number six, and Vaughn was number seven. And uh, she was offered, a, uh, I understand $1,000, and in that day, it was, that's a lot of money, uh, to give the baby uh, to a fairly wealthy couple that didn't, couldn't have any kids. And uh, it was very tempting to them because they were hurting so bad financially by the, at that time, and yeah, she had already lost two, and she had four at home, and uh, anyway, it's interesting because uh, Vaughn grew up and became very, very influential in the church. He became a dentist and a uh, mission president. And, and okay. keep going, huh? Keep going, keep going. Anyway, uh, mom uh, uh, had uh, all the boys then uh, pretty much in a row. Um, uh, there's uh, Vaughn and then Floyd and then Donna, I mean, sir, Donna was after Vaughn and then Floyd, Ronald and Bud and me as Bob and Bill and Danny and Bernie. And, and then the, the little baby Barbara was, was born after my father was uh, captured on, on Wake Island. And so he was gone and Barbara was about three, three and a half, four years old by the time he got home from from uh, the prison camp in Shanghai, China. That was a very difficult time for my mother and a, a, a very special time of how she handled uh, raising the kids. Uh, there was 12 of us at home having, because uh, I remember making the lunches, 12 of them to go to school. How old were you when you were doing that? Uh, I was five when my dad left and nine when he came home. And uh, it was a joyous day when he came home, and uh, he uh, he was he was home about four or five years and went on another mission to uh, Kentucky, and did very well. Uh, my mother, uh, when Dad was captured on Wake Island, she uh, w by that uh, she uh, took a class on uh, women's apparel corsets. And uh, she became a registered corseteer and was even referred to by some of the doctors uh, on uh, women and men who had lost their musculature so that they really needed a corset bad. And, and she was, they were referred to her. And she uh, did that for a year or so. And I remember we would have to leave the house uh, when uh, somebody would come in because she needed the bedroom in the house to to uh, fit the undergarments on women that she was selling to. And she did that for probably about a year and then opened up a shop in Boise, Idaho called uh, Packard's uh, Dress Shop on 904 Bannock <laughs> Street in, in Boise. The store is still there. Yeah. She, uh, but it's not called that. that she... Uh, <clears throat> She did very, very well. She was so kind and helpful to people uh, with that store. And it opened it up so that she could buy things uh, wholesale, including our clothes. She would buy them wholesale and bring them in. And so our suits and everything, she would get them a lot cheaper and she'd get them at the store. We never did go in the store. She would just bring them in and hope that they would fit. Anyway, uh, so I... My sister Cleo uh, was mentally handicapped. She was born handicapped, and uh, she became the mother of the home, while uh, Mom uh, Esther uh, made the money, and he became the father of the home during those very trying years. And even afterwards, uh, Dad came home from the prison camp with poor ears and eyes, and and health was just terrible teeth were bad and everything. Yeah, he had to have all of his teeth out and it was, he came home in really bad shape and really couldn't do much. He, uh, 
he uh, he was a carpenter and so he got on with the church and building chapels uh, many of the chapels that are there today are still in use that he built he he and uh, three or four other carpenters were hired by the church for half price that they would they would work and uh, so that's how he kept busy uh, mom became uh, because of uh, these experiences, these hardships, and the number of children that she raised, <clears throat> and uh, the quality of her children became very evident in the valley. Everybody knew the Packards. And uh, my mother was a stickler on education and grades. And uh, that's why I'm a an orthodontist, as she put the pressure, and it really, really paid off, big time. For everybody. For everybody in the family. <clears throat> it was because of my mother. And, uh, and so she was selected in 1952 as the mother of the year for the state of Idaho, and she won. She went national and won, and went back to New York in fact, I got to go back with her. I just got out of the hospital. I, my arms and things were still bad. And, but I got to go back with her with Ben and, and Donna and Beth. And a bunch of us went back. She was on Welcome Travelers. Uh, they're out of Chicago. And uh, we have that on tape. And uh, it's in the external hard drive. And uh, she was uh, selected and was, was number two in the United States. Uh, for uh, for that year, for Mother of the Year, because of her, uh, she has a picture of her uh, honored by the governor of Idaho uh, with a certificate and things that she won. She won all of Idaho. She was a fantastic lady, <clears throat> very knowledgeable. She uh, she felt really bad that she grew up with very little understanding of the gospel, being out of Canada. And in Napa and things, she never got a chance. But when, uh, when Dad was uh, captured on Wake Island, uh, she blossomed. I mean, she just went and, well, for, for the first uh, six months, she was dead out bad in the hospital even uh, with depression. But uh, she, then she just, uh, just caught hold and uh, became very knowledgeable. And uh, I remember during my teenage years as the number one gospel doctrine teacher in, in the ward, <laughs> the bishop's wife was uh, the other gospel doctrine teacher and she got upset because uh, all, every, everybody went to my mother's class. <laughs> it was, anyway, she was really a very, very knowledgeable when it comes. And uh, it, my, my mother became very uh, domineering, uh, bullhearted, and uh, and uh, because she was having to run things back at home without Forrest, mm -hmm. and because of the shop and being a boss, being independent, making me independent, she hated the government. I remember her getting mad at me one year. I was the oldest at home, and the census taker came. And uh, and I said, well, he said, how many children do you have? How many this? How many cows do you have? And and uh, man, I went ahead and told him when Cle uh, her mom came home, I, she was really upset that I told him all that because we that increases the taxes, and she does not believe in taxes. In fact, that's what took her life really is that that's why they were traveling from uh, Bountiful Utah to uh, Boise, Idaho on uh, D's plane, they were flying to Boise and uh, crash landed because they were heading to Idaho to clear up some of the, the uh, IRS problems that they had when she closed up the shop because she wasn't keeping hardly any records. And um, they, uh, so anyway, in the, she lived just three days. Uh, after that airplane accident and uh, dad was in the back seat also with her of that plane and uh, he was uh, paralyzed from the waist down he was unconscious for three months and um, and woke up that found out his wife had been killed 
and uh, and he was uh, uh, he was pretty well paralyzed uh, b below the waist. Dad was, and had to wear a diaper and things like that. But uh, but that uh, they by that time they had moved from Boise. Uh, well, I didn't say that they. they uh, we were all born in uh, in uh, Meridian, Idaho, on a farm, a forty acre uh, farm, cattle. We had uh, milk cows, and uh, we raised alfalfa hay and things to feed them. And uh, then uh, after I went on my mission, she, uh, while I was on my mission, she moved to uh, Bountiful, Utah to be with Dee and the rest of the family that had moved out of uh, Meridian. And uh, great, great woman, just a great woman. Can you describe her how was she as a parent uh she expected an awful lot from each of us uh so uh we were very very we worked very hard to please mom uh dad was more easygoing but mom was uh she uh she would uh, bribe us i i, I got ten dollars for reading the Book of Mormon the first time. <laughs> and that was a lot of money in those days. And uh, uh, she would uh, bribe us to get A's, I, I remember. And that's where I get that too, is we, uh, she really valued education and music. She would, she would really scrimp and save in order to give us all music lessons, voice lessons to, to Boise's best uh, teachers and piano lessons. Uh, we all learn how to play the piano. And uh, the, uh, some of us didn't stick with it, but, um, and, and singing, we all sing. The Packards knew how to sing. Does she know how to sing? No, she never would, but she knew her music. Uh, when we were on the piano, she knew when we'd hit the wrong key, just she would yell from kitchen, from the kitchen. I remember he would, uh, uh, she knew quality uh, music. And uh, she, uh, she had a very strong testimony. Now, some of the, some of her doctrines weren't quite uh, pure uh, <laughs> because she had opinions. Uh, like for instance, she believes, uh, she, uh, and I don't know whether she believed it to the end, but when I grew up with her in the, my teenage years, she believed that the Holy Ghost was the mother in heaven. If you think about it long enough, you, no. can, you can pretty well see why, because the women have that type of character of helping their children. And um, anyway, the, uh, but most of her other doctrines weren't that far off. So how was she as a, how did she discipline y'all? Uh, she, she would use a stick to, to paddle us. Uh, but I don't remember, ever remember getting a paddle from my mom, but the girls do. Uh, Barbara does, uh, and L, uh, she was with L and D. And it was interesting, the last time that uh, Barbara, uh, in about uh, getting a, a spanking, mom uh, had him go out and get a stick, no, go get a bigger one, and, and then uh, she, she says, you're gonna, you're gonna spank me for not training you and teaching you right. And that's exactly what they had to do, and they were bawling. They just couldn't do it. And uh, anyway, she was, uh, she taught us. She was very, very good. But um, she was honored, but she deserved it. She deserved every bit of it. Do you remember anything that she would say often to y'all that was like a saying that you, you remember that mom yes. always said this? What are some things that she would? Safety, well, if it's worth doing well, if it's worth doing, do it. It's worth doing well. I remember that one. And, um, Just because somebody else did something, that is, 
make it right. Yeah. She always said that. She always mm -hmm. said that. Yeah. Or at least you said. I remember when when I says, well, but what she's, a, doing but that? she's <laughs> a good girl. And she'd fire back, but what's she good for? <laughs> was she critical? Was she hard mm -hmm. on people? Mm -hmm. She was. She she judgmental. Uh huh. She was very judgmental. And in fact, I understand now in talking to Bernie and Barbara that one of the reasons that uh, she moved from uh, Meridian was because she went crossways of the bishop's wife. Relief Society. She doesn't, wasn't all that hip on Relief Society until she got into <laughs> Bountiful. Was she self-righteous? No, she never was. She, she was very humble. Mm -hmm. She just, uh, she just expected re uh, perfection from us and we would work hard to was get she it. a hard worker? I mean, obviously yeah, very, she had very a lot hard of worker. Mm -hmm. while he was in prison. But very, very kind. She would have people come into her shop who couldn't afford anything and needed something for a wedding of her daughter's or of their, of their daughter. And um, she said, well, why don't you try this on? Or, 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 or how about this one? Try that. And she would make them walk out with ever, without ever paying because she knew them that they didn't have the money okay. and she it it wasn't that often and she would never tell the only ones that, the way we got the message was that the uh her uh back in those days when the shop was going heavy uh, when we were younger the the bishop's wife worked for her one of her main ones, Mabel Roylands, Bishop right wife. The bishop was uh, George Roylands. Uh, you know, she, she would do uh, odd things too, different things, you know, and uh, that were against the law, in fact. Mm -hmm. Don't. Uh... Better not tell those. <laughs> oh, no. We'll shut it off now and go to mom. <laughs> anyway, I'll turn it off. <laughs>